Alright, this is my second video uh, about Jehovah's Witness, and obviously, you know, I talked about Jehovah's Witness being a cult a lot, and so that has obviously uh, spurred the question of, of, are they really a cult, though? Well, so let's let's look at that. Um, in a cult, they rely on this special, hidden, or secret knowledge that nobody else knows about. Um, this is actually how the Gnosticism got going in the uh, in the early centuries of the of the Christian Church, um, possibly as early as um, as Paul's day. You know, we can't really know for sure, but potentially that's how old Gnosticism is. Um, Mormons claim the exact same thing: some secret hidden knowledge um, that w that was only given to him after you know thousands of years through the angel. Um, there's two different accounts of what angel that is, or whether it is an angel, I don't know, whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, it, 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 traditionally cults always do this. You know, oh, well, the, secretly this guy gave it to this guy, and so we have this secret, this secret thing going on. In Buddhism, there's actually um, a sect or a cult, whatever, um, I think it's called the Zen cult, that relies on a secret hidden knowledge that was given through the Buddha uh, to this other guy, and... It, it, it completely relies on speculation with no historical proof whatsoever, okay? And that's exactly what Jehovah's Witness does. Um, everybody is, has been wrong throughout all of church history, um, and we are the ones with the, with the secret secret knowledge, um, and you, you can't question as honest, and, and this is just how it is, okay? Well, well, let's look at their, their – do they have any substantial claim to this? Well – the grand majority of them don't know uh, Hebrew, Greek, or Aramaic, so they don't know the original languages, so how can they possibly translate it properly? Um, they don't say who did in any of the translating. They also don't say who um, who uh, wrote their resources and everything. So for all you know, they could have gotten some drug addict on the side of the road. You have people who have no qualifications who are making these claims and writing these things and translating these verses, and honestly... Once again, what qualifies them to do this? We're talking about eternal life here. I think we should be asking these questions. But the Jehovah's Witness will say, you know, don't ask questions. Okay? You can actually get kicked out for asking questions. All right? So let, let's look at that. Is that a cult? Well, traditionally that kind of seems like a cult. But even if that's not enough to convince you, let's look at a definition of a cult. A religious group that denies one or more of the fundamentals of biblical truth. Okay, well, do they do that? Oh, no, no, we don't do that. Well, let's look at that. They say, they say, oh, the Bible is God's word, yes, but you have to understand it according to us. You can't read it by yourself. You can't study it by yourself. You can't even read whatever translation you want. You have to do it according to their brainwashing. And they, they, all, they, they train their new converts in this. They, they sit there and brainwash them. Oh, well, this is why we believe this, and this is why they believe this. And the person is so, so wanting to have that peace that they'll actually believe the nonsense that the cultist tells them. So yeah, is the Bible God's word according to Jehovah's Witness? Well, kind of, but how we tell you it, it reads, not really how it reads, not really how the original language reads, which is what we're going to tell you that it reads. Um, salvation, how are you saved? Well, of course you're saved through Christ's blood, of course, of course. But, once again, if Jesus isn't God, the same person as God the Father, then why is he in a place of being able to forgive us our sins? The only person who was physically able to save us was God himself because we sinned against God. See, but in Jehovah's Witness, they never clarify that. They just say, yeah, kind of Jesus, you know, whatever, yeah. But salvation, yeah, okay, that. But then also you have to be part of our organization. You have to go here for all five uh, five services a week. You have, to, you have to get involved and do everything that we tell you. And we, you can't ask any questions. This is starting to sound a lot like Jonestown without the poison, okay? Um, so then, not only this, though, you also have to do uh, th their door-to-door -door stuff, okay? Y you can't do witnessing through any other means. This is how you do it. Jehovah's Witnesses have an intense hatred for other religions because, according to them, they do not, you know, act. And they're Satan's organization. They're just trying to, trying to confuse people. And the reason why they do their community service is to confuse people more or to tempt you away from the faith. Meanwhile, the Jehovah's Witness really don't do that much in the community. Occasionally, you'll find one or two Jehovah's Witness persons that do something in the community, but as as a congregation, they really don't. They kind of just have this idea of we have this secret hidden knowledge that everybody else is, is not um, subject to. So that, that really raises up God's goodness. If God is so good that he won't even send people to hell, 
a physical, actual place, then why the deuce would he allow a false idea of salvation and himself in the scriptures to last for so long before he before he re revived it in Jehovah's Witness? That doesn't sound like a very good God, does it? That sounds like a God who just doesn't care. Once again, if God was willing to send Jesus, okay, regardless of, of God's revelation, before Jesus. If he was willing to send Jesus, then why, oh why, would he then immediately allow the doctrine to be lost, and then for it to be recovered only thousands of years later through Charles Russell and then through the other people of the Jehovah's Witness? And before you say, we have nothing to do with jo Charles Russell, yes you do. Compare his teachings with your current teachings, and you'll find that they're the exact same. Reworded, always reworded, but still the same, okay? So then you have you have to be part of the organization. You have to do their dumb little witnessing thing just to be saved. Okay, this is works added to salvation, added to Christ's blood, not Christ alone. Christ is insufficient. Okay, then you can't ask any questions. And what happens if you ask ask questions? You can either get ostracized, where you're still technically a part of the organization, but people have to avoid you like the plague, or you are simply kicked out. Well, that doesn't sound very good. So what about God? Jehovah's Witness teaches multiple gods. And they'll say, oh no, we don't believe that. But if Jesus is a god, then that means that there are multiple gods, which means that God himself is a liar. Because God said, there is no other god. I am the only one. There will never be one after me, nor will there, has there been one before me. I am it. No god has been formed. No god will be formed. There, there is nothing. I am God. Okay. So that would make him a liar. But see, Jehovah's Witness no, have already thought about this, and so they have their little loopholes to jump through. Well, we'll say this instead. Instead of saying that God is a liar and therefore unstable, we'll say, we'll say that, you know, and, and they have all, the, all these little things. I'm not going to go into it, but the point is they always have, this, have these little ways of, of covering up their tracks. But instead of it being clear, you have to, like, go through these loopholes of confusion to reach their conclusion. It's just complete nonsense. Oh, well, when he said God, he was talking about I am God Almighty and there's no other God Almighty. But he doesn't say that. He says, I am God and there is no other. Colossians says, Jesus is God. He doesn't say a God. He says, Jesus is God. And in my last Against Jehovah's Witness uh, PowerPoint, I actually talked about, can we justify translating John 1, a God? No, we can't. Not under Greek. Now, if, if you want to, you know, um, not know Greek and you want to get somebody who doesn't know anything about Greek and you want to translate it however the heck you want to substantiate your own bias, yeah, I guess you can translate it like that. But if you actually want to translate it from the Greek into English, there is no way that that translates to a god. But that was in my last lesson, so so you can go back and watch that. Um, then, obviously, I already talked about the Bible, how you have to understand it according to their little things. You have to hop through all the... Even if a, if a passage is completely clear, they confuse it and they change the wording just so you'll have to hop through 20 different loopholes just to reach their understanding of what the biblical text is saying. They'll take one vague passage, okay, and build an entire doctrine off of it when the rest of Scripture clearly clarifies. Well, Colossians says that Jesus is the firstborn. Yes, it does. But the rest of Colossians show it clarifies what that one verse means. So they'll they'll take that one verse that sounds like it's saying that maybe Jesus was created and ignore the whole rest of Colossians. John, they'll they'll ignore all of John's claims about God and Jesus being God. One, one God, three persons. Okay, and there, there's another thing they do is they'll they'll retranslate things. Oh, they'll say, oh well, traditional Christianity. They'll teach you that that that. Uh, they believe in three gods. No, we don't believe in three gods. We believe in one God, three persons. Okay? Jesus is God, but he's not the Father of the Spirit. Very simple. It's not that complicated. Uh, once again, though, Jehovah's Witnesses are so caught up in, in reason that they become unreasonable and lie to themselves and make it more confusing than it actually is. Um, then, and then they retranslate things like traditional hell, right? That, that's a traditional Christian belief. And instead, they say they teach hell is soul sleep, that you just cease to exist. 
that doesn't make any sense at all, especially considering the context, especially how Jude, for instance, says about a place where, where Satan and, and, and whatnot are going for uh, for all of eternity. How, excuse me, Jesus talked about the, the fires that never never cease burning, about how the, the forever the, the, the gnashing of teeth and all these things. But ignore all those passages just so that they can say Jesus is, Jesus is loving. Well, yes, God is loving, okay? But that doesn't mean that there are no consequences for actions. I'm going to go out and kill someone, and then, because God is loving, I don't have to repent or anything, God's just going to forgive me because he's loving. Well, that's completely, not, that's completely stupid. What if my father is the judge, and so I get taken to court in front of my father, who is the judge, and he says, you know what, I love you, son, so I'm going to just let it go that you killed that person. See, love necessitates justice. You cannot have love without justice. Love is not condoning everything. Love is not accepting everything. Love is patient. Love is kind. Read 1 Corinthians and I'll clearly tell and show you what it is. Then, then the end times, they have this thing of, oh, we have the end times figured out. Yeah, as they have multiple times. There was one dating for something in the 1800s that didn't happen. 1914 was, was first meant to be this and then this. And then there was uh, Moses was supposed to be, be resurrected or, or, or whatever in Los Angeles or some nonsense like that. None of these prophecies have ever come true for them. Yet they still have all these little things. And if you look at their literature throughout the years, they will reword stuff. But remember, this isn't a cult. Even though traditional Christianity they clearly deny, even though they have no qualifications for their denying, even though they tell you not to ask any questions for their denying, even though they depend on this secret, hidden, special knowledge that nobody else is privy to, they are still not a cult, right? Well, I think that the evidence shows that they clearly are a cult. Okay, now let's go to God's name. They always say, oh, Jehovah's God's name, or we're restoring God's name. Well, let's look at the nonsense of this statement. First off, I am not very good with Hebrew, but I wrote it here in a transliteration. Eye, Asher, Eye, okay, um, which is God's name as revealed in Hebrew, okay, all right, which is roughly, you know, YHWH, just for clarification here. I know I'm drastically oversimplifying this, but roll with me on this, okay? which became known as a tetragrammaton through Greek. Now, YHWH turned into Yahweh as vowels were added much later, much later, okay? <coughs> and the reason why the vowels were added was because Hebrew didn't have vowels originally. So for clarification, they added the vowels, okay? So that takes us to Yahweh, okay? But then, Throughout the course of time, Yahweh was added with the vowels from Elohim, which ended up with Yahweh, okay, or Yahweh, however you want to pronounce it, um, which then, by way of Latin to English, translates into Jehovah. So even if this was God's name, it is so far diluted from what God's name actually was revealed in Exodus that there's no way we can actually claim this. It is, a, is an English translation that comes through, through, um, through Latin, through this erroneous uh, uh, translation of Yahweh into Yah Yah Yahweh from, through Elohim, Elohim, and then through Yahweh, through uh, YHWH, all the way to Eye Asher Eye. It just doesn't make sense, but yet they'll tell you this is God's name. You have to pray specifically to this name, and uh, you know God won't hear it otherwise. Even though in the Bible people prayed to Jesus, people worshipped Jesus, but He's not God. Even though He's clearly worthy of worship and clearly worthy of of, of uh, accepting or uh, forgiving sins and and accepting prayers, even though he's, he's clearly worthy of all this, He's not God. But instead, God's name, or God Almighty, God the Father, this other God than this other God, okay? Remember, there's multiple gods, and this ultimate God here, um, his name is Jehovah, even though Jehovah is not Hebrew, Aramaic, or Greek. What do you think the Greek word is that, that, that uh, stands for God? The Father God, not, not the Holy Spirit, and not, not uh, Jesus. Theos. What do you think is, is the title that they give to uh, Jesus? See what I mean? And then uh, Kurios, Lord, is something that, that, that is once again um, goes with God the Father. 
and they called Jesus Kurios. So Jesus called both Theos and Kurios in Greek. Why should we not think that he is, why should we think that he is not God? So once again, going to God's name, is there any basis to the Jehovah's Witness claim that Jehovah is his actual name, that we should reestablish this name, um, and that this is the only name? No. And also it's important to note that the Jews honored God's name so much that they wouldn't even, they wouldn't even uh, write it half the time. That's, that's even held to today. They won't spell God G-O-D. They'll spell G underscore D. Why? Because they honor his name so much that they don't even they don't even want to come close to blasphemy. Meanwhile, the Jehovah's Witnesses are clearly being blasphemous, and their and their secret knowledge has no historical basis, no grammatical or syntactical basis, no uh, no religious basis. It came out of Charles Russell's butt. Complete nonsense. So that takes us to a cultic personality, okay? Which Jehovah's Witness clearly does. First off, abandoning of the family. If a family member comes to you after you've been converted to Je Jehovah's Witness, you have to tell them, I am Jehovah's Witness now and we cannot associate together after this. And it is excusable for a few occurrences here and there, but mostly you cannot associate with your family. Official doctrine, by the way, official doctrine. Ostracism. If somebody is so much accused of asking questions or doing this or doing that, and they have like a, a list a mile long of different things you can be ostracized from, the rest of the congregation can't even hang out with you. They have to tell you, you have been ostracized, I'm not, I'm not going to hang out with you. And then you have to tell them, I am unclean, you cannot, you cannot speak with me. And, you, and this, people actually think this isn't a cult? And let's talk about the financial robbery. The people in the local congregations that are doing all the work get almost no no financial retribution. Occasionally, nowadays, they do in, 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 for pay travel, but they do not have a paid position. So where does all this money go? To the higher-ups, the people on the television and all them. It goes to them. Meanwhile, they're getting fat, rich off the, off, their, off the money that you're paying for, and the people in the local congregation actually believe the lie that they're, they're doing good. So what about, what about their materials? They have to pay for their or I'm sorry, they, they're not required to, but they're strongly encouraged to pay for the materials. And the, and the price that they're encouraged to donate is so much more than it actually cost to print these resources. So where's all this extra money going? Once again, it goes straight to the higher-ups. Straight to the higher-ups who sit there and tell you all their their yearly report on what you need to do for the next year and their nice suits and their nice to, uh, uh, watches and all this nonsense. Meanwhile, you're becoming weaker and weaker and financially less stable while they hoard on it. But remember, it's not a cult. Oh, no, it's not a cult. They're not lying to you for their own selfish ambition. And you know the thing that really ticks me off? is when a cult gets a hold of somebody, they oftentimes won't even return it or, or come in the first place to, to, to correct Christianity because a cult has done so much to lie to them about the basis of reality and religion and salvation that they get so burned out that they just don't even care anymore. Think about the survivors of Jonestown. Some of them aren't even religious at all anymore because of the lies of Jehovah's Wit uh, Jonestown. And it's the exact same thing with Jehovah's Witness. The people who are finally able to shake free of the chains of the lies of the cult oftentimes just walk away from God in total. So this is actually worse than simply lying to someone like a Buddhist or an, uh, a Hindu would. This goes beyond that because they actually claim that they are Christian. And that's what makes it even worse. And remember, in all of this, you can't ask questions. Before you are saved, you are called, you can analyze things and you can criticize other religions and whatnot. But then, once you are once you are part of their part of their thing, you can only um, you can't ask any questions. That's it. If somebody, if you are found in possession of materials from another church, you could get ostracized from that, depending on the situation as well. But remember, this isn't a cult. Well, if that's not a cult, I don't know what is. I don't know what is then. They lie. They, they, they lie about qualifications for salvation, about who God is, about uh, the reading of the reading of Scripture, about um, the eternal punishment. They lie about the end times. Uh, they, they they deny every historical Christian doctrine there is to deny, but they're not a cult. Okay. They say God's name is some ambiguous thing that doesn't even make sense. I mean, anybody who knows about language can figure this out. 
it's not that difficult. Language hasn't always been English. Or when they're doing the translations, they'll say, one word cannot possibly translate to multiple words. Well, actually, yes, they do, because Greek is not English, and English is not Greek. So sometimes you have one Greek word that translates to many English words, or many Greek words that translates to one English word. That's just how translation works. Translate from Spanish to English, you're going to encounter something similar, although Spanish is not as old as, uh, or Spanish in its current form is not as old as Cornet Greek. Still, there are similarities there. Try to translate from Latin, or Hebrew, or Aramaic. You're going to find that there is no direct overlap in translation. It's like this. Okay, there, this little hole in the middle, that's where you're able to translate it. But this body over here and this body over here are two complete things that cannot possibly be word for word exact. Not only that, but English is a very um, plain language in the sense that the words have a very kind of... Uh, English is hard to learn, but it's got a very clear understanding there. Greek has like ideas that go with words. Okay? It's completely different, but once again, they'll tell you that you have to understand according to their basis. Maybe sometime, someday in the future I'll talk about the trans their retarded translation, but, and I do mean that in the defini de dictionary definition of retarded, um, but for now, is Jehovah's Witness a cult? Yes, they are a cult, and they will lie to you, they will take your money, and they will take your time. They will, they will steal from you, and they will give you nothing in return. But they'll claim to give you everything in return. They'll claim that some some new ha new earth awaits you that will never you'll never see. Anyways, um, I hope that this that this has been clarifying for you. Please do not just just look for yourself, analyze for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Go do the research yourself. But don't let yourself believe in the lies of a cult. Because at the end of the day, all that they want is your time and your money.